Queridas amigas y queridos amigos, luchadores por los derechos humanos. Dear friends, fighters for human rights in Norway and throughout the world. Hace tres años, three years ago, la mayoría the majority of the Bolivian people placed its hope in the government headed by Evo Morales in order to solve the problems of poverty, unemployment, underemployment, low quality of education, racism, discrimination, division within the country, environmental problems, and other injustices. Like never before in the political history of my country, President Evo Morales received the support of 53% of the electorate. Today, three years later, the Bolivian people are beginning to feel a painful frustration. The 53% electoral support has fallen today to less than 35%. In reality, the government has greater support in a third of the country, but not in the other two-thirds of the national territory. Likewise, in this year's constitutional referendum, held on January 25th, the government received the support of only three of the nine capital cities. Under the government of Evo Morales, the, to mitigate their situation, the poor receive unsustainable vouchers which do not solve the problem of poverty. Meanwhile, the rich have become richer during these last three years. Bolivia, seen before as an exporter of natural gas, today is an importer of natural gas. For example, According to the Bolivian Institute of Foreign Trade, the volume of natural gas imported in the first trimester of 2009 is eight times greater than the total volume of imported gas during the prior year, 2008. Diesel oil importation is also growing. A decade ago, 60 oil pits were drilled. Three years later, only three. Popular humor with much irony jokes that this government has created more than 300,000 new jobs, but outside of the country, with the, youth, with the youth leaving Bolivia for other countries in order to look for better opportunities. The new constitutional text promoted by the current government creates a double citizenship. Those of indigenous origin having more rights than those who are non-indigenous. When Bolivia was founded in 1825, there was a Creole and Mestizo social pact that excluded indigenous people. Today, in 2009, the exclusion is inverted. The indigenous exclude the non-indigenous. That is to say, there is a new form of racism and discrimination. Bolivia had not managed to overcome its regional, cultural, and ethnic differences. Those differences, certainly, were not created by this government. However, during these three years, such differences were increased by the aggressive discourse and confrontation of the government of Evo Morales. The division of this country is greater now than it was before. In this context, conditions for the enforcement of human rights are each day more and more difficult. The government explicitly boasts of its failure to respect the norms, the, the laws, and its own constitution. The president said that he felt the laws tied his hands. So he acted outside the law and had his lawyers justify his illegal and unconstitutional measures. 
In today's Bolivia, there is no respect for the right to dissent and the freedom of expression. Any person, institution, or social organization that dissents or criticizes the government is directly or indirectly silenced or pressured, including the organization that brought us together, the Human Rights Foundation. For example, governmental shock groups frequently attack journalists. One of them, Andres Rojas, was expelled from the city of El Alto for having broadcasted opinions critical of the social movements associated with the government. An indigenous journalist was killed in the rural town of Pucarani. A television station was attacked with explosives in Yacuiba, in the lowlands of the country. Mass media that cannot be silenced is bought by the government, with capital that appears to be of Venezuelan origin. The President of the Republic himself humiliated a journalist in the government palace who was accused of having published an article that was incorrect, according to Evo Morales. More than 200 cases have been documented of journalists being attacked in the exercise of their work. Similar acts had not been committed even by the previous military dictatorships. It is paradoxical to confirm that no institution dedicated to the defense of human rights has said anything. In my particular case, my home was broken into and attacked by a group of government activists for the supposed crime of having exercised my civic right to disagree with the content of the new political constitution and having warned my country about its anti-democratic dangers. They stoned my family, they hit my wife and my children with sticks and beat them until they had to be hospitalized. Surprisingly, the president, the vice president, and their ministers, instead of condemning this criminal attack, justified what happened. They covered up for the attackers and blamed the victims. The Bolivian state did not give my family police protection, despite our public insistence just days before the attack. On the contrary, the government insulted us and verbally attacked us. The previous week, another indigenous leader, Marcial Fabricano, had his whole body whipped by indigenous groups connected to the government. This time, the government was careful to condemn the attack, nominally, but in fact did nothing to identify and punish those who were responsible. In March of this year, another group of governmental activists beat Marleni Paredes, an ex-MAS delegate and government dissident. They took her from her farm and expelled her from her community. More than 250 cases have been documented of private property being taken. More than two weeks ago, another critic of the government, the Quechua Indian Roman Loaiza, was prohibited from entering his community and province as punishment for thinking differently and was warned that he would be buried alive because of his opposition to President Morales. Again, it is paradoxical to say that no institution dedicated to the defense of human rights condemned this publicly. On the contrary, the insecurity of citizens has increased because of the lynching, either physically or in the media, 
of whoever does not share the governmental vision or who are critics of the excesses of the social movements that are supported by the government. These attacks by the indigenous mestizos and creoles are endorsed by a government that throughout the world calls itself indigenous. It identifies itself as the first indigenous government. Indigenous people like myself, victims of the government, speak in our indigenous languages, as opposed to Evo Morales, who does not speak any indigenous language. We never hid our indigenous condition and our identity, as opposed to Evo Morales, whose indigenous identity is a skillful electoral marketing construction. A false indigenous icon whose customs are non-indigenous was constructed from a coca union leader, Marxist, Leninist, Communist, and Atheist, as he defined himself at the recent Ibero-American summit in Trinidad and Tobago. In our country, let us remember that the indigenous let us remember that in our country, indigenous authorities, as opposed to Evo Morales, are examples of prudence, wisdom, love, and respect. A true indigenous leader controls his tongue, and all of his words are derived from a long life of experience and wisdom. Let us see the right to life. The day he was inaugurated as president, three years ago, Morales promised Bolivia a government respectful of human life. He frequently says that they are part of the culture of life. Nevertheless, in three years, 60 lives have already been lost as the result of his aggressive and repressive politics of political antagonism. Eva Morales has more human lives on his shoulders than any Bolivian military dictatorship. I fought against the military dictatorships. They broke into my house several times, took my things, beat me physically, arrested me and tortured me. But the repressors in the military dicta dictatorships never dared to touch my wife or my children, unlike this supposedly revolutionary, leftist and indigenous government. The substance of the new state constitution creates adverse con conditions for the enforcement of human rights. Although it does list a long catalog of human rights, nowhere does it specify the manner of compliance and application. In that sense, the long list of human rights runs the risk of being a list of simple desires. Let us see the number of errors in the formulation of this constitutional text. In the first place, the ordering criteria is that of ethnic citizenship and not of political citizenship. That is to say, it talks of indigenous citizens as having more rights than non-indigenous citizens who have less rights. It is as if the president of South Africa, Mandela, had created a black citizenship and a white citizenship with different rights. The, the new constitutional text recognizes 36 native, rural, indigenous nations and peoples, but does not recognize indigenous peoples who live in the city, while it is us who are the majority of the country. The new constitution fragments justice into 37 judicial systems, disconnected among them and lacking the principles of appeal or due process, principles deemed universal at this point in history. The constitutional 
The Constitution strengthens autocracy and grants more powers to the executive. Practically speaking, the principle of balance among the three branches of government is disappearing. Bolivia had been moving slowly towards a process of administrative and political decentralization, but is now returning to the old inefficient and corrupt centralism. The biggest corruption scandal in the hydrocarbons business has happened under this government in a combination of corruption, murder, and proxenetism. From the economic perspective, they ban national and foreign investments because the government has statutory preference to form only state enterprises. And where mixed businesses are allowed, they are obligated to reinvest the dividends and lack recourse to any type of international arbitration. The most vibrant business in Bolivia today is drug trafficking. There is no control over the sale of drugs. This coming December, general elections will be held. This will be a beautiful opportunity for the Bolivian people to correct these mistakes and choose between two options. One option headed by Evo Morales, a program that is authoritarian, confrontational, and nationally divisive, and an opposition option, democratic in nature, based upon national unity, which exercises sovereignty when facing foreign powers, and which is concerned with addressing in a responsible way issues like poverty, unemployment, racism, and other injustices within the country. If the opposition goes divided into these presidential elections, it will be like Garcia Marquez said, the chronicle of a suicide foretold. For our part, we are working to achieve a greater degree of unity between civic movements and people related to democratic political parties. At the beginning of this year, we started a civic movement in Bolivia which, last January 25th, surpassed roughly 40% of the electorate support. We intend to reach and surpass 50% in December with the progressive desertions of people and groups who are still today loyal to the government. In this way, we would be able to create conditions for the enforcement of human rights in Bolivia. That means to create new democratic institutions for the promotion and defense of human rights. That is to say, to regain the democratic achievements of the last 25 years. We cannot continue with the current instrumentalization of human rights at the service of an authoritarian and anti-democratic program. Thank you very much.